Right then, so we're back to cabinet cam, <laughs> as I'm going to call it, because my phone is literally hanging off a cabinet. So I've done all the work I had to do to the crankcases. So I finished drilling up the, the holes for the splash plate. Machined a recess for the oil pump. And I've also put in the clearance for the frame and the exhaust on the bottom. Additionally, I also went through all the threaded holes and just run a tap through them just to clean them up then gave the case a good clean. So that's ready to go. On the top case, watch no clatter that day. What I done was, I'll see if I can zoom this in. Uh, I tried to, <laughs> I was gonna remove these studs, but to be honest, they're well in there, so I've, I've just left them alone. So I figured, I was trying to figure out how I was going to drill and tap these out. So what I ended up using was a collet adapter. I've took a picture of it, so I'll try and put the picture in somewhere around about here. So I've got a long 5 mil drill with this collet adapter, which I use for a lapping valve. And uh, that enabled me to drill down into the casing and then I was able to tap them as well. It's just a six by one thread. And then two grub screws that are Loctited in with 270. And then again, I just run, run a tap through all the holes just to clean them up. Make sure we weren't going to run into any issues when we are assembling it. And that's all we have to do with the top crankcase. Wrong way. So the next step will be to take all the parts out the the other crankcase I've got. I actually started building an engine a year ago, but uh, I've got a different oil cooler I'm going to try, and I didn't want to. This case here has. Uh, the original hole for the starter motor and had it sitting on a shelf whereas my other case that is blocked and I didn't want to try and remove that in case I damaged the case really so I just decided to leave that so that's all the work done in the cases I'll get all the parts out of my other cases and then the next video will be or the next part of this video, I'll see how long we're at. Uh, we'll go through inspecting the crank, inspecting the gearbox. And then the video after that will be assembling the bottom end. We're looking for, you will get a little bit of play in these, back and forward. Should have very little play this way. But you will get a little bit. The double gear, there's like basically no play in it, but these you will get a little bit of play. Same in these ones. You're looking for a... I normally go on the assumption that if you rock it, no rock it, but if you move it back and forward and you can feel a bit of movement, that's okay. If you actually feel it, kind of then that then you've got a bit probably got a bit more play than what you want so this is looking pretty good but well, I know it's looking pretty good same in this one we do the, all the same checks the other thing we do is <coughs> your dogs it's easier to see in this one because they're bigger you're looking at these edges to see if there's any damage here. These should be nice and uh, regardless if they're square or dovetail or 
they should be nice and sort of machined finish nice points in them they shouldn't be rounded over or kind of shouldn't be shaped like that should be nice sharp points in them and then where let's pull this off in here where the dogs locate for the next gear if you're looking for sort of any damage on these edges you can see that's got a bit I mean it's nothing it's just shined up really same with here so you're looking for no sort of marks or damage any of these points in the gears What you want to check and where the forks locate. So in here in this one. And then in here. And here in this one. Basically you're sliding gears. All your sliding gears, this is where your forks locate. And what you want to check in these is this edge. This edge here. And this edge here. Basically the side walls of where the fork. This should be nice and straight. Should be no wear in it whatsoever. If there's wear in that, that will affect the gear change. So onto the forks. On your drum, there's measurements again that you can check these with board gauges and check the outer with a micrometer. But if you just kind of, there should be no real play that way, like twisting. But it should still slide nice and free. See that? You can feel a bit of drag with the oil. It's got a light coating of oil on it. So there's a bit of drag on there, but there's no real twisting. And you can go through all these again. Nice bit of drag. No real play. And then on the fork, this is where the Fork locates into your gear. That's not the right gear, but you can know, kind of get the picture. Uh, you want to check this issue, see no real sort of marks in it or chips, anything like that, gouges, burn marks, or worn away. But you can get a measurement so you can actually measure these to make sure that the right thickness. But also, the other thing I do is when the gearbox is built in the crankcase. Uh, it goes the engine up upside down you've got the whole gearbox in I also measure these in the gear to make sure they're straight so you want it sitting like it should be this, like that no kind of cocked but I mean there's look very basically fast there's hardly any movement in that at all but you can measure it and just make sure that they're sitting nice and straight because if they are bent it will affect the gear shift but yeah that's a quick run through the gears one last thing I wanted to add if you are going to replace the circlips eh, just replace them don't never reuse these gearbox circlips just we should never reuse any circlip really but especially these ones, just bin them straight away and when you're fitting them, always make sure like, <clears throat> if you can imagine this circlip is holding this gear back so it's stopping this gear moving this way so it should always have the sharp edge facing out so when this gear, if it was to push against if you can imagine it pushing against the circlip it's pushing against the flat edge, not the rounded edge because these things are stamped <clears throat> so it's just one last thing I wanted to throw in there about the gearbox so I'll give a quick run through what I check on the crank if you've never worked on one of these cranks or had any day one of these cranks before it's an idea to get two elastic bands maybe that length for the edge of here to the edge of here quite thick put it over the whole assembly onto here twist it then bring it back and put it over here because these the outer race can 
slide back and forward. So it could slide far enough that your needle rollers could drop, drop out. So I would definitely <laughs> do that first. And you want to do that on both sides because all four of these are the same style of burn. So the first thing I measure is the run out. And I use two, two V-blocks. And this one I've got, the one on the generator side I've got set up in a 6 mil parallel and it just brings the, the crank nice and even. If you're going to measure on a metal surface you can use a, a magnetic dial gauge base but I found that these benches, even though they are quite sturdy, they do have a bit of deflection, so if you lean on it, or it will actually move the dial gauge. So I tend to measure them on my granite surface plate, and if I do that, I use a, it's like a steel block, which is quite a bit of weight in it, so there's no movement in the dial gauge. So you measure it at either end, just to make sure, and you can get all your specs. I would say if you're going to start doing all this, the first thing you need is specs, you need to get a manual so you know what you're looking for. So then the next thing you can measure, with these ones you can actually measure, like if you move your V-box to the outside, you can actually measure the deflection in the burns, but it's quite difficult because the measurement's so little. I think it's... Six thousands of a millimetre to point zero one five. Is it? Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous to try and measure, but you can measure that. The next thing I'd measure is the big end, and what you're really looking for is how big a gap you've got. So you pull the big end to one side how big a gap you've got here just to make sure there's no sort of excess wear in there then the small end you can measure with a dial gauge again to see how much play you have that way so like that And then the last check is to measure the small end, the internal diameter. So what I'd use for that is a micrometer to set up my size from the, the manual for, for the specs. And then I'd use the micrometer to zero my bore dial gauge. And then I can measure the internal diameter of the, the small end then that will let me know if it's within tolerance or not. So there's one more check to do, but I forgot. <laughs> and I didn't have the editing skills to make it look like I didn't forget. So what you want to measure is uh, play in this berm. So we've measured the cyclings, but we want to measure the play. So what you want to have is you want your crank so it can't rotate. You want it fixed fairly, fairly securely. And you want your dial gauge set up running in line with the the rod then you want to move the rod and measure the amount of play in this bearing so like that. I would have it set up so it was higher and fixed so then I could hear the rod pointing up and down but any angle but the problem is you have to keep it still because if you move it it affects the dial gauge so you need to have it everything kind of fixed still and then backwards and forwards. So yeah, it's just a quick run over the, the crank. So you're measuring end play, uh, any play in these bearings, any roughness, notchy, notchiness, that's not good. We need to measure the, the amount of play that's in the actual bearings itself, all your mains and your big ends. You want to measure how much the rod can move how much clearance we've got in here. And 
And yeah, that's that's it. That's my quick run through of the crank. I do plan to go through all the stuff that we're going through in separate videos, and that'll be like a lot more in detail. And I'll actually be measuring and checking, and okay, we'll go through it all a lot better. Uh, but I'm going to run that as separate videos rather than just me building this engine. So in the next video, I'll be putting the bottom end together and depending on time scale wise, because I don't know how this video is going to turn out because it's a bit long, uh, we'll probably build up to the barrels and pistons. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. But if you've made it this, this far, well done. <laughs> and I uh, appreciate it. Please hit like and subscribe and cheers.